Wind Cave National Park preserves one of the last remnants of the mixed grass prairie and one of the longest, most complex cave systems in the world. Thanks for joining us on another journey. Today, we're in South Dakota at Wind Cave National Park. If you're new to the channel, this is April. Hey. And I'm Wayne. We do a video every Thursday. So sit back, relax, and, and enjoy, enjoy the, the journey. journey. So I'd like to welcome you to the natural entrance opening here at Wind Cave. We're gonna go all the way back to 1881 where two brothers by the name of Tom and Jesse Bingham, they happen to be hunting right up on that ridge where you folks actually parked today. When Jesse gets down to the bottom of the gulch here, he sees a choke cherry bush in front of him and he sees a branch. And Jesse goes up, he pulls that branch back excited to see what it is and a huge gust of wind hits him right in the face so hard that the hat on top of his head gets blown up into the air 15 20 feet high and Jesse has to scramble right up these rocks in order to grab that hat and this time on purpose throws it in front of the hole and watches it get blown up into the air Jesse's been gone so long Tom has already set up camp for the night Jesse gets up to the fire he gets up to camp Tom starts yelling at him Jesse calms Tom down he says I found something and at first light I'm going to show you this incredible discovery well, they get down here to the hole, he takes his hat, he throws it in front of the hole, and he gets sucked. The reason why that happens is because Wind Cave is a barometric cave, which means this cave functions very similarly to the way that our lungs function. So when we have high pressure weather systems moving into this area, air is being forced down into the cave. That pressure inside the cave builds and it wants to match and equalize with the pressure up here on the surface. And the high pressure weather systems leave from this area and they're replaced with low pressure systems coming in, generally storms. All that built up pressure inside of the cave forcefully expelled out through this natural entrance opening here. Some days as strong as up to 70 miles an hour. It's very incredibly strong and that's where the cave itself gets the name Wind Cave. start talking about the formation of the cave itself. We're gonna take another one of those trips back in time to about 350 million years ago. And at that time, right where you folks are standing, there used to exist a very shallow sea. And along that seafloor bed, there lived a variety of small creatures and different types of coral. And as those creatures and coral begin to die off, their remains stay littered all along that seafloor bed. Now as the years pass and more and more of those creatures in their piles on top of each other continue to build up, soon the weight of that water on top of them pressurizes them down. It starts to form them into a mineral that today we call limestone. You can actually see this layering effect all along the side wall here. Now the reason why we're able to see this so well here is because Wind Cave is indeed a limestone cave. Is this natural? Oh yeah, basically the layers of limestone just connect or disconnect and fall down. Limestone is a sedimentary rock so it forms in layers. So when it breaks apart, it breaks apart in layers as well. What makes Wind Cave unique, not only within the Black Hills, but throughout the world, is that as our limestone is forming, small cracks are starting to emerge. The formations you're going to see within Wind Cave because we had sitting water, first you're going to see box work. In order to have box work, you have to have these two unique conditions. First, you need the correct set of minerals, primarily that calcite. And the second, you need sitting water. As that water and that carbonic acid are filling all the way up to the top, it has the time now to slowly start eating away at the walls all around it. It starts to reveal those earlier calcite fillings. Today we call those calcite fillings box work. So when you're seeing this box work, you're actually seeing where a layer of limestone once existed. You can see how a little bit of that box work is kind of peeking out from the walls. The second formation is called frost work. It's made up of aragonite needles, which is very similar to calcite, but a little bit thinner. And as the water was sitting in that section, it's slowly leaching out the aragonite from the wall itself. And when the water evaporates, it leaves behind those aragonite needles. Third type of formation that you're going to see here at Wind Cave is called cave popcorn. Similar to box work is made up of calcite but the way that it's created is more similar to frost work where there's a water sitting within the room it's slowly leaching out the calcite as that water evaporates it leaves those little tiny calcite deposits which almost look like pimples or popcorn kernel and because they're made out of calcite you're going to see popcorn on the box work. 
So Wind Cave is 156.3 mapped miles. We are the seventh longest cave in the world, the third longest here in the United States, but all 156.3 miles actually fit nice and neatly within one square mile of surface area. So it's not really accurate to think of Wind Cave as long series of passages beneath the ground. It's better to think of us as a complex series of spider webs all stacked right on top of each other. Because we have sitting water, that's why you're not gonna see a lot of stalactites or stalagmites, because those formations require running water. Wind Cave doesn't have a lot of smooth walls. It's definitely different looking than a lot of the caves I've been in. If we had flowing water moving through our passages, then our walls would be smooth. The rooms would be a little bit more rounded, but we wouldn't have any box work. folks to think about what the experiences would have been like of those earliest folks here within the cave because you don't get to use the pathways they're not using the steps and they're not using the lights but as you can imagine it's going to be a little bit different of a tour right when they arrive to the cave they're given an unlit candle and they descend down into the cave we walked down three sections of stairs right at the very beginning but back then that first section was actually a rope that they slowly repelled themselves down where at the end of that rope they then climbed down a very thin wooden ladder about 40 feet at the end of that first ladder there's a second ladder waiting for them where they go down another 40 feet when they get to the end of that first portion they're having to get down on their hands and knees at some sections along the trail it's so tight that they're actually squeezing themselves through on their stomach You're paying attention, does anybody remember when I mentioned when they would light that candle? That's because up to this point, they haven't. Because again, that barometric aspect of the cave, they're doing that entire initial section in the darkness of the cave. They can't see where they're going. Instead, they're following a line of twine that that middle son, Alvin, had already left out for them. This room is known as the model room. It's because the different formations in this room look like different animals. Specifically, this one down here, they call this the goat. Oh, I can see it. And this head right here, they call this the deer's head. There's actually about eight different specimens in this room that all have different animal names. For this head right here, is if you actually stand right where I'm standing. I'll give you a hint, it's an animal's head that's open and the mouth is open. It looks like a T-Rex. So it's just kind of like in the formations, you just have to imagine it. On behalf of the National Park Service, I want to thank you folks for choosing to not only come to a national park, but coming to Wind Cave specifically. We want to thank you guys for watching our video all the way to the end. If you would, hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend, and like always, thank you for living life.